It's Mother's Day, Sunday, May 11th, 2014. I'd been working for about an hour when the sky suddenly went dark as night, thunder and lightning erupted, the power went off for a couple of seconds, and hail began pounding the house. I went back to work for another hour, then decided to take a break and do a walkabout to check for hail damage. As I approached the big house, I heard the sump pump kick on, and it sent a spurt of water out of the basement, so that's working as it should. Then I noticed that the peonies are about to bloom, and that made me think to shoot a mini vid for Sarah. Here's a little vid for Sarah. This is, um large group of the regular tiger lilies but you can see these little guys that look different those are the martagon lilies and there's just a few of them in this patch as I said before the majority of the martagon lilies are right here by the pond next I went into the big house everything on the first floor looked fine so I headed to the basement. Okay, down in the basement, most of it is pretty darn dry. There's just a few areas where the cement's broken and sunk. And I think that's water coming up from the water table. And I can hear it dripping in the other room. Let's see what we've got. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a little bit of pooling back there, but most of that's going to run to the sump pump, which is working. This, I'm hoping that Jesse will know how to fix. I can't tell if you can see this very well. Get a better shot. But there's a crack here the water's just pouring in. I don't know if you can... See, it's not up here. It's coming in from under this crack here. And this is just a tiny bit lower than the sump pump. But as it fills up, it drains to the sump pump. So it's not in danger of like flooding the whole basement, but it's just kind of nasty. After leaving the basement, I headed up to the second floor. And everything's looking fine up here. It's dry and happy. No damage anywhere. Mm, yeah. Then I headed up to check the attic. With the new windows in, everything up in the attic is bone dry. Absolutely lovely. After doing a full walkthrough of the big house's interior, I nearly headed back to work, but decided that I should probably do an exterior walk around before calling my inspection complete. As it turned out, this was a really good idea. Well, it's a damn good thing I'm doing a walkabout because that electrical wire came down. I will call Jesse immediately and let you know what's going on. Oh, a tree came down. A tree came down and took the electrical wire down with it. That's why we lost power for a short bit. Christ, it's, oh gosh, I'm getting out of here. As you could see in that vid, I saw the power line draped over the propane tank right away, but the significance of that image didn't hit me until after I'd noticed the tree being down in the crib yard. The moment I realized the significance of a power line draped over a propane tank, I ran away away. After only a few failed phone calls, I managed to reach Jesse, who told me he'd be right over. While waiting for him, I called OPPD 
and notified them that our power line was down and draped over a propane tank. Of course, they told me they had a crew in the area and that the crew would be by toot sweet. But it's three hours later as I write this and they still haven't shown up. Happily, Jesse got here much faster. Within minutes, he was able to assure me that there was no immediate danger and that all would be well. Okay, OPD is on their way. Jesse's been here and gone and is taking a look at the situation. And the, yes, there is power running through that line. As you can see there, it was the tree got topped by something and took the line down. So yes, that is a live line running over the propane tank, but it's insulated. Um, the tower that held it to the big house has been ripped down. Oh gosh, and you've got some siding damage. I'll take a closer picture of that. But uh, he says that there's not any immediate risk of kaboom. And hopefully OPD, OPPD will be here shortly. Jeez. While waiting for OPPD to arrive, I became braver. So here are some close-up pics of the siding damage on the north side of the big house. As you can see, the pipe that once was attached to the north end of the big house, the pipe that contained the power line and took it up to the top floor, was pulled off the house damaging the siding, bending and becoming cracked off at its base, which is when the power line became draped over the propane tank. Here are a couple pics I took when I became brave enough to go back inside the big house. This also was when I discovered bits of the siding that had been ripped off when the pipe was torn down, strewn about the property. At this point in time, I also realized that the cribyard tree that brought the power line down and ripped the power line pipe from the house had been broken into three pieces by whatever brought it down. After this photo session, I headed back to the little house to resume work on this vid. At 2.45 p.m., almost five hours after first calling them, OPPD finally arrived. Although OPPD Scott was incredibly helpful, I immediately called Jesse to come over, which he did. And that way, Jesse was able to learn Scott's assessment of the damage and oversee Scott's work. Hopefully, Jesse soon will call Alex and they can plan what to do to ultimately fix this situation. Basically, according to Scott, OPPD is not responsible for anything that happens between the meter mounted on the pole out in the crib yard and the big house. Thus, OPPD can do nothing about the power line pipe that was pulled off the house, bent and busted at its base, However, Scott took the time to wrap the live wire connections that were on the ground between the propane tank and the house so they'd be safe until Jesse and his electrician can repair the damage. Scott also safely pulled the power line off of the propane tank and took a chainsaw to the down crib yard tree so that he could move the line out from under the branch that was previously on top of it. After learning all this good stuff, I went back to work, yet again, in the little house. About an hour later, I heard voices out on the property and went outside. There, I found Jesse, his wife Adina, and their seven-year-old son Brandon, meeting with two horticulturists of Jesse's acquaintance. The horticulturists were here to tour the property and help Jesse determine the best plan to accomplish the property's new plantings as dictated to him by Sarah when she was visiting back in March. 
After taking a few pics and showing one of them through Mrs. Ross's shack, I once again returned to the little house and resumed work on this vid. At last, I was able to finish it. Thus endeth today's Green Fandamily Farm Drama vid. And by the way, it is now 7.30 p.m. and we're under a tornado warning. Fun on the farm!